We're going to talk for the next few moments on soldering principles. Obviously you're going to need a soldering station or soldering iron. In some cases you may be using a butane powered soldering iron. Uh, be aware that the butane powered soldering irons aren't allowed for carry-on or checked baggage. So if you're going on a remote site, you're going to have to bring along a regular soldering pencil or soldering iron for that. Now a couple of things that you'll need to solder. You're going to need something to hold your work. Now, I've got a little vise here, but there are also little jigs and little clips and things that you can use. You also need something to clean off your iron. There's a couple of things you can use there. My soldering station here has a sponge that I can clean the tip off with. Or you can use one of these little um, metallic uh, curl things to clean off the tips as well. And you'll need a solder. This comes in different gauges. But usually what you'll find in the solder that you'll be using is at the core you'll find a flux cleaning agent, a rosin flux in this case. And that's going to help to remove the impurities out of the joint as we solder. Also some other soldering tools. Um, if you make a mistake and you need to remove solder out of a joint or connector, there's a couple of ways to do that. One of which is a little uh, spring-loaded solder vacuum where I just push the plunger down and when I heat the solder I can suck the solder right out of the joint or I can wick the solder out of the joint using solder wick like this. So those are a couple of the tools. Um, now the soldering station is not on at the moment, so I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. I haven't warmed it up yet. Uh, you're going to need the proper heat for the proper time. There's a couple of different ways to make those adjustments. Some soldering stations may have an adjustment on the front. Or in this particular case, with this one, the tips are replaceable here. And the way the temperature is regulated on this one is I can actually see a 7 on the bottom of this, which indicates that this is a 700 degree tip. So you can get these in various temperatures. So I can replace this tip with maybe a different shape or chisel point, conical point, maybe a different temperature depending on the work that I'm trying to do. So the tips are replaceable. Uh, sometimes they wear out after time, they get oxidized. So you can replace those. In this particular model as well, you can also replace the heater element if that goes. As far as just basic soldering rules here, again this iron is off at the moment, but I want to make sure that the, the tip is clean for one thing, so I'll take it out of the holder. I'll wipe it on the sponge or use this to clean the tip and before I actually touch the material to it I will pre-tin the tip of the iron using the solder. So I'll pre-tin the tip and then I can go ahead and do the solder work and after I'm done with the solder work what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clean the tip off again, apply a little more solder to it and then put it back in the holder. So those are just a couple of things to go with that. Oh by the way as far as um, being able to solder it's actually a metallic bonding uh, of a couple of materials there. And the idea is that you want to get the work hot using the soldering iron. I'm not going to try and just apply solder to the tip and drip that into the joint, but I'm actually going to get the material hot and then I'm going to apply solder to the joint and allow that solder to flow around the joint. So that's the idea there. Also, the material needs to be clean. Now how do we clean that? Well, use flux as a cleaning agent. And most of the solder that you'll be using will actually have, at the core, a rosin type of flux. So when you apply this to the, to the joint itself, you'll see a little smoke come up, and that's actually the, uh, the rosin uh, burning off. So that rosin is going to come to the surface, it's going to remove the impurities such as rust, oxidation, uh, and any dirt or anything else so that you have a clean joint to solder to. If you have to go back and redo a joint, if you've touched a solder more than twice, then you probably, because there's no more flux left in the joint, go ahead and remove the solder out of that joint and then start all over again.